Thank you very much, Kim. Um, you should definitely look into that. Hello and welcome from my side. Uh, I'm happy to guide you now as the moderator for the rest of the day. My name is Simran Mann. I'm also a policy officer at Bitcom. And today, now in the afternoon, we will hear about explainable AI, synthetic data, and how AI can help city trees. Um, so I'm excited. I hope you are too. For a more detailed agenda, as you probably already have heard, you can check Swap Card, and there you can also save sessions that you do not want to miss at any cost. Um, we will just continue as we have done before. So if, in case there is time, we will be taking questions. Um, and other than that, we will. I'm sure all the people that are here today are open for a coffee later and uh, have uh, fun for chatting up. OK, now, um, we have a talk on moving forward with explainable AI adoption rate and essential dimensions for reliable use of AI. And I can welcome Lukas Burles, Senior Associate at PwC's Financial Services Technology Consulting Unit and a specialist in the field of data and advanced analytics, and Manuel Madovsky, a senior consultant at PwC. Through their studies in computer science and various project experiences, they were able to acquire a broad technological understanding, especially in the topics of machine learning, data engineering, cloud, uh, data engineering, cloud platforms, data visualization, and responsible AI alongside IT management. I'm happy to welcome both of them. The stage is yours. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Test, test. <laughs> great. So hi, and uh, welcome. Um, first of all, it's great to see so many of you here. I'm personally thrilled to see so much interest in the topics of explainable AI, and also in the topics of uh, the dimensions that uh, are behind these uh, explainable AI topics. So uh, we're thrilled to give you a few insights today into exactly what makes explainable AI and what is the way forward to go in the future. But first things first, uh, who are we? Uh, we are part of the core PwC Explainable AI team. Um, on stage, we have uh, today myself, uh, Lukas Burres, senior associate and data scientist at PwC, and my colleague Manuel Marowski, also senior associate and uh, data scientist within the core uh, Explainable AI team. Behind the scenes, we were helped greatly by Klaus Berger, who helped tremendously with the research and also the implementation of all the things you are going to see right now. So what will we be talking today about? Um, first things first, we are going to give you an insight into why blind faith in AI is dangerous and what exactly are the, ch the challenges between, uh, behind responsible AI. Next, we're going to uh, explore the dimensions, as we said, that uh, make up explainability and also responsibility in AI applications. We are then going to do a deep dive into these dimensions, really bringing out the technical details and also the aspects of our implementation of those details. And in the end, we will give you a brief uh, recap and also a way forward what we see are the challenges and also the upcoming topics in the fields of explainable AI and responsible AI. To start off, did you know that nowadays most companies have successfully operationalized multiple AI use cases? To be precise, this is 4.5 use cases on average per company. So the most important thing to uh, recognize here is that it's actually successfully operationalized use cases. So it's not just prototypes, it's not just first tries at AI, but really um, productive, really operational cases that, company use, uh, that companies use in their daily business. And while seeing the number 4.5 is great, there are also some risks associated with using AI and with blindly uh, relying on AI in exactly those cases. So uh, to further explore that, um, I can show you some details of a study that we at PwC conducted a few months ago. And uh, we asked the participants 
um, what are the top three feared impacts of AI applications when they are not meeting the uh, requirements of reliable AI, uh, responsible AI, sorry. And uh, what you can see in the first place is that actually 46%, so nearly half of the companies we asked, uh, feared a loss of productivity. Also, 44%, so also nearly half of the uh, companies we asked, feared a loss of customer confidence, and 25 even feared immediate legal risks whenever their applications, their AI applications, do not meet responsible AI requirements. However, on the right side, uh, we also asked the uh, participants what they actively investigate in their models. And we see that there is a great discrepancy here because 37% uh, actively investigate performance and functionality metrics in their models. So there's a strong focus on what the AI does and if it does that precisely, but far less as to how explainable these results are. Only 17% actually uh, investigate explainability in AI use cases, and only 14% uh, take into consideration things as ethics and regulation. To take that one step further below, we asked ourselves, why is that? What are the challenges for companies when it comes to measuring and actually implementing responsible AI? And we figured out three main components uh, that make up these great challenges that companies still fear nowadays. And the first one is that there is no standardized approach to measure, we put it in uh, quotation marks, responsibility and explainability. So there's no standard approach to do that. There's no book that tells you how to actually measure responsibility and explainability. Second, a bit more obvious, there's a major technical effort needed for the implementation all those keywords around data ops, ML ops, companies will have to use that in one way or another to actually enable the measuring of explainability. And the last one is that responsibility and explainability consists of many dimensions. It's not just a one-dimensional problem such as performance where you can get an accuracy score between zero and one, but it's far more components and it's far more dimensions that make up explainability in AI. And uh, after doing some extensive research and also looking at uh, academic publications and uh, white papers, we figured out an approach that consists of five core dimensions of explainability and responsibility. I will just go briefly through them with you before we do a deep dive and really take out the technical details of each dimension uh, in far greater detail. So the first one in the top right corner, that is comprehensibility. Comprehensibility basically defines how well a model is understandable by a human user. Typically, uh, this asks the question if the model is a white box or a pad box and how interpre interpretable it is in itself. The second dimension is performance. That is rather obvious. It is a question of how well a model performs, how accurate it is. Because after all, the most explainable model makes no sense if it's just wrong. Third one down below is faithfulness. Uh, this is a bit trickier and it asks the question if the model itself is explainable or if it is so complicated, for example, for uh, really deep neural networks, that we will have to use a surrogate model to even explain some of it. We have information type as a dimension that classifies the type of information that is encapsulated in a model. What can we get if we try to explain it? Can we get causal rules? Can we just get uh, feature importance scores, for example? And the last dimension is granularity which indicates the level of possible explanations. This is typically divided into local explanations to explain just one data point and global explanations, which enables explanations over the whole data set. And to take that one step further, Manuel will do a deep dive of each of the dimensions. Thanks. Um, now, before we start with the explanation of each dimension, let's first get the approach. First, we want to deeply understand what's behind each dimension. Next is we want to take the challenges in applying these dimensions into a real use case or in our prototype solution. And then what, how we mitigate or solve these, these kind of challenges. The first one, the first dimension we want to take a deeper look into is the performance dimension. As you probably can suggest by the name, the performance dimension is aiming on 
how well a model predicts the outcome, the, the predictions, how well these are made. Um, in general, there are a couple of metrics um, to measure this performance. One is A1 score, F1 score, um, MAPE, and so on, and so on. But the key challenge is here to find the right measurement, the right metric to measure the performance. Right? Not every metric is applicable for every model, and some, model, some metrics have advantages, some have disadvantages with them, associated with them, so we have to choose the right one. In our solution, we just used a combination of various of them. So for instance, we used F1 score for simple classifications and MAPE and co in conjunction with R2 score to make a pro to evaluate the performance of a model. You could also ask, as Lucas did, why is performance one metric to measure the comprehensibility or explainability? Well, as he already mentioned, you can create a model which just says no to everything. It's basically a useless model, but we can very well explain why it does the things or does the predictions he does. So that's why we put this additional dimension into consideration to put it into a broader view in the context of the explainability. The next dimension we want to look at is the comprehensibility. It basically measures just how well a user, end user, is understanding a model. Well, a user is an individual person and that's why it kind of is hard to measure and especially hard to automate. Because if you look at an expert data scientist, for instance, he will probably more understand what the, is the, the concept of a model instead of an end user. So, and to measure it, there are basically three approaches. The direct measurement, basically asking people, okay, what is the outcome of the model? Did you understand the model? And so on. A goal-driven metric, which is basically some kind of framework um, which looks at each model objectively. And the proxy metric, basically using another metric to measure the comprehensibility. One example is, for instance, the model type. Um, let's look at the decision trees, which are intrinsic more explainable or comprehensible than neural networks with each layer. In our approach, since this is kind of a really complex task, we choose two options. First, the direct metric and the proxy metric. The direct metric is backed up with a pre-existing survey, which we can then use to basically analyze the model and map this information to the direct or the pre conduction survey and our own um, proxy metrics. The next dimension is the granularity. It basically indicates the level of explanation. It can be divided into local one and global one. The local one basically meaning, okay, we can define why a specific sample data point got this prediction. Let's say, for an example, if we are in credit scoring, we got Max Mustermann and we know, okay, that's why he got the credit or not. The global one is a little bit more difficult or a lot more difficult. It's basically saying that on the whole data set, we can find patterns why something or why one why one's this decision was made, basically. And it's much more complex and the computation is much more difficult to do so, especially in conjunction with, okay, which is the right explainer to choose. In our use case or in our prototype, we limited our solutions or limit our choices in uh, Shep Explainer and Lime Explainer, which made it a little bit more easier. But still, on the global explanation scale, we have to extrapolate and use just samples um, to get basically an approximation on, on the global explainability. It's quite a difficult one. The next one um, is faithfulness. As Lucas already mentioned, it's basically the idea, okay, we got the model which is too difficult to, to run the, the evaluation on, so we have to find a surrogate, and basically a simpler model, which we can then run this, our test algorithms on to get deeper understanding how the model works. 
But this arises another question or challenges, a challenge. How well does this model is basically a surrogate and, and exchange for the, the model we want to evaluate in, in the first place? Um, so the papers mentioned just things like all or nothing. Either you use the model you want to test and get a result, which is kind of binary choice and not enough, not precise enough. So we figured out a way that we basically measure the, the distance between the actual model and the surrogate model to get a bit more granulated granularity on how well the model, the surrogate model fits on the one we the simpler one we want to test or we are testing. And last but not least is the information type. It's a categorical value, basically defining um, the outcome of the explainer into three categories. One is the importance, the second one patterns, and the third one casual or causal. Um, the importance basically means how important the feature is in, in conjunction with all the features available. Let's just take into consideration the, the credit scoring again. Um, assuming we have the income, which is probably a very important feature compared to, I don't know, the age or whatever. Um, pattern defines basically that a set of features is has some influence in the outcome. Let's say that the age, age below 30, income above 1,000, whatever, has an input or an influence in the outcome that this person will get a credit. And causal goes even further. It basically means that there is a rule between these features or these, these expression of features like age, 13, income, whatever, that this person will always get the credit for instance. And the key challenge is really to automate this behavior and make it basically a granular very uh, value for the scoring. And that's why we choose basically to couple the explainer, the explainer we use to get the other like granularity and stuff to the category type, the information type. So for instance, um, we defined if we can measure Shapley or we use apply Shapley values, then the category, the information type is importance. For the next step, I will hand over to Lucas. Yeah, just uh, in the last minute, let's do a quick recap of what we uh, presented so far. So in the survey uh, that we conducted, we found out that most companies, even though realizing that meeting responsible AI requirements is crucial, not many of them actively invest and investigate um, their models uh, when it comes to the actual explainable AI dimensions. Also, automatic model assessment still faces many challenges, so it's not that easy to actually automate uh, the measurement of the model as it is with, for example, performance when it comes to accuracy. Scoring dimensions as well are still in the early stages of development, so there's a lot to come in the future. And also, there is currently on, that's currently only applicable for classification and regression. So more complex AI tasks, such as uh, generative approaches, will still have to uh, come up with own solutions for exactly these tasks. And as the last point, a 100% automated assessment of models might not be possible in the future and even seems unrealistic for the future. There will always be some kind of human factor that plays and there will also uh, be a, a human assessment that will have to be complementary to the actual automated model scoring. So if you want to find out more, you can visit us at pwcde slash responsible AI. And there's a lot of more content uh, that we would love to share with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.